Steven, second coming of Tecumseh. What are you about to blow our minds with this time? Well, it's going to it's 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 going to be pretty heavy. Um, just just so you don't think this is just something that somebody made up. The second coming of Tecumseh was actually a prophecy that he would return and take back his capital someday. It was sort of like the hopes of the remnant of the United Tribes that he had gotten together to try to uh, stop this Masonic militia from coming in. And pretty much what's going on today with Islam is what happened back in the days. It's, it's interesting how history repeats itself. But the, the prophecy of the second coming of Tecumseh, Tecumseh was a Shawnee, and he was from uh, the, the, the Panther tribe. And he was a prophet which is a messenger. People need to understand what a prophet is. A prophet is a messenger. So usually a messenger has to have, number one, a message, and then two, they usually have a sign to confirm what they're saying is true. But the second coming of Tecumseh was actually an Indiana historic event um, in the 1900s. Uh, I think it was exactly in the, on the 1900, in October, they had a week-long festival called the second coming of Tecumseh where the city of Indianapolis had an arch going into the, the magic circle downtown monument circle. And ab above the arch, it said magic circle because that's what they consider the magic circle on top of their magic square. This is how they do their magic. <laughs> mm -hmm. But anyhow, they, they had a guy dressed up like Tecumseh and they gave him a key to the city and they was making a, a week long festivity of like a, a new Orleans, you know, masquerade kind of party. A Halloween type thing. You know? This was so downtown made, Indianapolis? Yeah, 1900. It was called the Second Coming of Tecumseh. It was an event pretty much just to make a mockery of the Sweet. of the prophecy. Mockery? Okay, they were mocking the Indian prophecy. Right. Well, because they got, you know, the, the monument downtown is, uh, you know, it talks about uh, defeating the Indians and it's got Harrison with his sword, you know, giving him all kinds of glory and honor like he won this big battle and the truth is he went to do a battle, but Tecumseh wasn't even there. And that's why he went down there to attack because, well, Tecumseh was down south trying to get the tribes, you know, together to a confederation. And so Harrison went and invaded Prophetstown. That's a place up there by Tippecanoe up north in Indiana. Uh, there's a battleground there that you can actually go and visit. which is kind of interesting. Um, but basically the... Tecumseh wasn't there at the time, so Harrison sent in his troops and pretty much, you know, said that the Indians attacked them and, you know, pretty much wiped them out. So that's the end of Prophetstown, but it's actually a town called Prophetstown because that's where the prophet lived. He had a brother who was also called the prophet, but in my opinion and seeing things, you know, he was just a person who was an alcoholic that had a revelation um, that they should go back to their old ways instead of using metals and, you know, use the sticks and the stones and do the things they, they used to do. Um, but the Tecumseh came from a family, a spiritual family, and the Shawnee were um, known as the most spiritual of the tribes. They had an oral tradition that they actually came to this continent by crossing waters upon dry sand. So you can look at that might have been the, you know, uh, some of the, the, the history of Moses coming across the Red Sea on dry land, but that was the Shawnee story that, you know, they was on the East Coast, and that's how they arrived, by walking across dry sand. So that, and you and you combine all the other artifacts that they're finding that shows that the, the Hebrews were here, then you get an understanding that, that these tribes were special, but the Shawnee and the Cherokee were known as the ones who had the most um, closest relationship to as far as being Hebrew, using the name of Yah as their god, and uh, different different things they found, you know, like archaeological finds of, you know, the man holding the two tablets of stone with the Ten Commandments on it. I mean, how that get here in the Indian burial areas when, you know, and that's that's another thing I'm, I'm, I want to get at. There was a picture that I posted on my Facebook site today that was something that I had discovered when I was going through researching the mound builders, the mound builder Indians and their their Phoenician connections or whatnot. And there is a shell that they uncovered in one of the mounds, and it has, it's like a square, but if you'll see it, it goes up and it loops, and it goes over and it loops, and it comes down, it loops, and it goes over and it loops, and it comes up. So it's a square, but it has loops on all four corners of it. And I thought, man, I've seen that somewhere before. And sure enough, I went back to the Babylonian cuneiform uh, plaques, and there was their god sitting on his throne, which is a little magic square. And he's inside one of these houses. The house of God is what it is. So how did the Indians, the mound builders, 
here know that Babylonian magic that was over there unless they had actually came over here. And that's the whole thing about the, the, the lost tribes of Israel. The Phoenicians were the greatest sellers there ever was in the time. And you got to remember during the building of King Solomon's temple, okay, the Phoenicians and the, the Hebrews were working together. And, you know, it's, it's not a good thing because Solomon went, you know, after the gods of the Phoenicians, which are the same gods we have here in America. <laughs> it's wild. But any, no, it, it's wild. But during the, the, during the time of the building of, of King Solomon's temple and the Phoenicians were, you know, in close alliance with uh, Israel at the time and, and King David and, and, and Solomon. Well, the Phoenicians were already traveling to this continent. And as far as the lost tribes of Israel, there was tribes that were fragmented between the north and the south. And there were certain Hebrews that didn't believe that you put uh, metal to stone. They were, they were the kind, uh, they were like the orthodox to where you don't make metals and you don't put metal mm -hmm. to stone. And that's why when they was building Solomon's temple, they actually had to cut the, the stones far away from the temple so nobody could hear the actual stones, uh, the, the chisels hitting the stones, because a lot of the, the Hebrews believed that it was wrong to build these monuments and, and put chisel to stone, because you have to be a, you have to make metals, and if you make metals, then you have to have slaves, and you destroy the earth, and you put metal in the, in the fields. I mean, the early plows never had metal tips on it. Jefferson came up with that. They just had wooden tips because they believed that putting metal into the earth, he was actually poisoning the earth with a man-made, you know, a metal like iron or whatnot. Do so, you think, I've never heard that, I mean, like, that sounds like completely anti-industrial revolution. <laughs> well, they, these people realize that in order to keep the earth, you have, there's certain things that you have to do because if you want to do them a different way, you're going to destroy the earth. So there's two different kind of mindsets in the, in the early Hebrews, those who wanted to build you know, like Solomon's temple, they, they used to have just a tent for their for their for their temple. The temple was a tent, you know, as portable as like, you know, with the Indians and their teepees, you know, it was portable. Uh, but then during the King Solomon's time, when he went, you know, with the Phoenicians, he saw, you know, the, the great cities and the, the temples and all this other stuff and got involved with the builders, which are, you know, like Freemasons today. And they had an alliance. And so you had Phoenicians and you had the tribes of Israel, some who you know, they, they didn't get along with each other, the North and South. So the lost tribes actually became lost because they went with the Phoenicians over here and established their own places over here. And they are, they're what you call the native Indians. Now, what you have is you have a division of Indians. You have like, you know, when you was in school, they taught you that the, the Indians were basically Asians or Oriental Mongols who came across on the Bering Strait when, right. you know, the land was, was dry or the water shrunk or the, the continents were closer together, whatever the case was. And I'm sure that's, I'm sure that's feasible for the, you know, like the West coast and, and, and the Southwest area. But as far as the East coast, and as far as the woodland Indians, you had the Phoenicians and the Hebrews, Israelites that came here. And, and, you know, just like back in the time when you had the Hebrews and the Phoenicians, Phoenicians had their own different idea of things because, you know, like they worship the sun and the stars and is into the, the horoscope and the zodiacs and all that stuff. And you had the, the Israelites that were, you know, more of the creationist, you know, worshiping the creator and the, and the provider who gave them this paradise, this promised land. So you had a warring faction between, you know, like the woodland Indians and the, the East Coast mound builders and all these mound builders like the serpent mound. And all these mound builders, those are the ones who were the Phoenicians who came over. And that's where they found this shell, you know, and it has, you know, like the, the sun disc in the middle. And it has that, that four square loop, like I was telling you. I am looking at it right side. now. I'm yeah, looking. and it, it, it just tripped me out because it's like I've seen that before. And then I went to the Babylonian, uh, you know, the, the, the religion and saw their God. And if you look up where the God is sitting, he's sitting on a magic square. That's a talisman. That's that's the whole idea inside of his house. He has a talisman. That's his throne. That's his power. That's how he's able to go into the underworld and be reborn. That's the whole thing about the apotheosis is having eternal life, being able to travel through time. And to have this shell with that engraving on it here a long time before Columbus, and that be, you know, its origins from Babylon, that tells you that they had to be the Carth you know, the, the Phoenicians that came over and, you know, with the Israelites came over and settled this place long before and never wanted to go back. And this was the promised land that they had been promised. And this was, you know, 
to them, this was their, their coming out of the wilderness and, you know, trying to find this promised land that they were supposed to be given. So there's, there's, there's a lot more to the, the lost tribes. The story of the lost tribes is, is one of the genocide of the, of the red man here and, and the reason why. And here is what is the kicker of it all. You're going to have to bear with me because this is just exciting because a lot of things have happened that just blow my mind. For one, the Empire State Building. Did you see the image on the Empire State Building? No, where is it? Where is this? A, it's in New York. I, I have sorry, I didn't mean that. <laughs> I'm not that well. Okay, maybe some. Hey, I might ask something that dumb in the future, but usually I'm not that dumb. Where's the picture? How do I see it? Okay, okay I just, you, I just you asked post, if I post, saw it. I posted it on my Facebook, but okay, I'm on it right now. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What is that? Are you serious? I was scrolling down. I was like, oh no. What the? What the? What the? What the heck? That is. That is. The God in which Washington trusts. That is that is the God of this country. They're calling on this goddess. She's a goddess of war. This this is blows my mind, dude, because when I saw this, I said, I know it because they said it was a Hindu goddess Kali. And it's like, that's oh. Ishtar. If she's a goddess of death and a goddess of war, that's gotta be Ishtar. So you Google, you know, Kali, goddess, Ishtar, and boom, there it is. One and the same. So you're saying, now why would they have Ishtar presented on the side of the Empire State Building? Okay, here's a good question. Why would they have Ishtar displayed on a cross on a federal obelisk downtown? You know, it blows everybody's mind that they can see on this building this image of this pagan goddess of death. She was the only goddess that demanded fetal sacrifice. She wanted the most purest of blood so they would either wait until the baby was born and sacrifice it, or they would go in and get it. And this is what freaks me out. This is the goddess, the only goddess that I know of, who demanded fetal sacrifice or sacrifice as soon as the baby's born. Like in Revelation, when it's talking about the woman about ready to give birth, the dragon sitting outside of it waiting to devour it when it's born. Right. Check this out. This is the goddess who demanded fetal sacrifice. This is the goddess that demanded that all her how all her high priests were homosexuals and gays. Okay, mm -hmm. these high priests of Baal, because Ashtaroth Ishtar is the consort of Baal. So this is basically Baal worship we're talking about. You know, with the sacred prostitutes to where you go there and you're actually getting something for your tithes. But they were called top hats and and high places where the temples. The woman represented the goddess and the people would come there and they would pay money and have sex with the goddess. And she would get in her sexual superior position on top of him, representing the goddess on top of the male, which is, is why you understand the whole thing about the missionary position. And all that stuff was because the pagans was always talking about the female being in the dominant position because to make the graven image, they got to have the moon goddess on top of the solar disk, which makes the image of the eye. But anyhow, I stray. Wow. Anyhow, I stray. But the, the whole thing about this Ishtar and, and, and this is as the war goddess, it wouldn't be so troubling if, you know, here's the Empire State Building and they got this image of this. It wouldn't be so troubling because you say, well, the goddess, she's not real. Okay. It's just a, a myth or a legend. But here's, here's the freaky part. This is the real goddess. The goddess is real. And I can prove that she's real. Okay. She's a, a real entity. She was born in 1961, okay? The same year that I was born, the state of Indiana was made into the goddess. In other words, this goddess Ishtar was actually made into the state, or basically through the apotheosis, the state was made into a goddess. Just like the Romans used to do where they declared their founder to be God, they declared the state to be his consort, the goddess. So the state of Indiana in 1961 went through the apotheosis process and made the state into this goddess Ishtar, which is why you have all that money that was supposed to go to widows and orphans from the world wars. Instead of going to them, they went to build a temple to Ishtar downtown, and it's called the World War Memorial, and it's nothing more than a temple dedicated to Ishtar. And you can prove it by going to the temple inside and seeing the image for yourself. So you're saying, what's this image doing on the Empire State Building and you're freaking out? Well, I've been living in a state that was made for the sole purpose, designed for and dedicated to this goddess so that it could become, in the physical reality, 
a real, true, living goddess that has the power to make laws. The, the state capital downtown, the state capital downtown is called Hathor because it is the house of whores. It is her house, okay? And, and they made the state into a goddess, just like the Romans did, to where she has power to make laws. She makes rules. She can break them when she wants to. She has power over life and death. She is a goddess. So the state of Indiana is the goddess Ishtar because they did just like the Romans did because this is a revived Roman Empire. They made not only Washington into the god who sits on the throne on the rainbow, they made the state, especially Indiana because it's part of the apotheosis process with him, into his consort, into a goddess. So, you know, that mystery of God I was telling you about how, you know, the God which came first, Christ or God, and the physical comes first and Christ came and then there was God. Right. It's the same way with this situation here to where in the past you had people sacrificing babies and putting them on the flame braziers, okay? And that's where you get the term sardonic laughter because the kids' faces would get all contorted and they would say that the baby was enjoying the flames and it's called sardonic laughter. And that's where you get the word can cannibal, cannibal, because K-H-A-N-A -A means the priest of Bell. So that's where you get the word cannibal was from this priest of Bell who was able to devour this, this child sacrifice, sacrifice to this goddess, this same goddess that the state of Indiana has become. So you have a state that is a war goddess. And it's no coincidence that Dr. Gatlin was the one who designed the machine gun here in Indianapolis when he was downtown on Monument Circle when it was the governor's mansion. Okay. It's not by happenstance that the U.S. Indianapolis delivered the atomic bomb and the whole crew was sacrificed. OK, it's not coincidence that they built that war memorial into a temple because that's the same M.O. that they always used on this goddess, that if she would make them prevail in war, they would build a temple to her. They would dedicate so many lives to her. They would sacrifice to her and they would restore her to her proper place of honor, like sitting in your nation's capital rotundra. OK, like sitting in the Indiana House chambers. OK, then that's what the story is about the second coming of Tecumseh. He would come back and he would take back his capital because it's the capital of the Indians. And these pagans took it like Harrison and said, we have to have this land. Father Washington needs this land, which was the capital of the Indians, their sacred capital of the Indians. Washington needs this land to establish the throne of the true religion. And everybody thinks, well, that's Christianity. Go to the house chambers and you'll see for yourself. There's Harrison. And he's established the throne of the true religion, holding the train of the goddess, the triple goddess, in the house chambers on a mural called the Apotheosis of Indiana. Okay? So you think this is far-fetched, but this is the same stuff the Romans did. Okay? They used to throw us in the arena with the lions as entertainment. Now they just throw us out into the streets and say, you know, watch ISIS. You know, it's the same story. It's the same story because it's the same goddess. It's the same goddess they've always been worshiping. And think of the consequences when, if, if indeed the physical comes first and then after which the spiritual Indianapolis, okay, actually caused the physical reality of this goddess who back in the days was responsible for all these crimes. Okay, now think about that. Think about that if the reality is that there first has to be a physical reality of a goddess in order for there to be a spirit of something that was a goddess that was worshipped in the past. They never saw it. They never heard it. It was just something in their mind, but it was a reality. It was a real spirit. Why? Because it became a physical reality in 1961 here in Indianapolis, a city that was designed by the same people, designed Washington, D.C. for the same purpose, the apotheosis of George Washington. And the goddess was the one who made it possible. And that's why your, your national monument is a, an erect penis of this God of earth who penetrates the queen of heaven, proving that he is the God of earth. He's sitting on the throne as God right now as we speak. Have you heard any pastors say we got to do something about this or we got to at least condemn it or object to it or something <laughs> besides saying you can't pin that on George Washington? I mean, that's, that's what I get. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah I have not heard it. Um, I have not gone and tried to tell people about it i would like to try to do that i mean that's what we're kind of doing here but but no have i have i ever in my church going uh life no not ever once have i ever heard anyone even talk about this and that's why you know <clears throat> oh steven schroeder he's a nutcase not that anyone says that but you know 
you're the only guy out there talking about it. And that's why, you know, we're talking about it now. I'm with you every week. We're talking about this until somebody does, helps it, you know. But anyway, that's insane, man. I had not seen this Empire State thing. It just happened today, didn't it? No, it happened a couple of days ago. But, uh, you know, the interesting thing is the guy who did it is, uh, I think, a Japanese artist. But he's an environmentalist. Yeah, EPA. Yeah, and it's like, well, EPA is getting plenty of funding. You know, Obama signed some kind of declaration to where, you know, he's got imminent domain of all the water and all life depends on the waterways. You know, and then he turns it over to the EPA. And then all of a sudden you got a place that's already hitting with drought, the Colorado River, something like that to have it destroyed. It, I mean, you, you could consider that domestic terrorism. I mean, when you really think about it, if he's on the other side, okay, and he's using federal agencies, you know, corrupted federal agencies to, to break the law. It wouldn't put it past me for, you know, them to start doing these uh, domestic environmentalist terrorism to where, you know, uh, oh, sorry, and they don't have to pay for it, and they get paid to clean it up, and they get paid to protect it. It's, it's madness is what it is. And, I mean, you could really look at it as, a, as an act of domestic terrorism, unless, you know, they can prove it was an accident. But, to, uh, you know, I've already heard the stories about they was making plans and they had to do something with it and, oh, well, kind of thing. Yeah, you know? you know, that's uh, yeah, that's a whole other thing. I, guess, I don't even want to get sucked into talking about uh, Obama there. But I want to hear more about this second coming of Tecumseh. So he's, I mean, it, the first, first of all, something a lot, you know, Christians and myself as a Christian, we've got to get past this. That sounds a lot like the second coming of Jesus, you know, and, and it sounds like blasphemous. Stephen, why is that blasphemous, and why or why not? Uh, no, there's there's plenty of second comings. I mean, the, the, the Jewish people are expecting Elijah to return. Well, they uh, also don't think Jesus was the Messiah. We don't agree with those guys. <laughs> well, uh, it's, 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 second, it's, it's, second coming it's, it's not blasphemy because it's, it's, it's not doing anything except saying that justice will prevail. If you know the whole story and you understand the whole purpose that, you know, uh, Harrison was nothing more than a, a Mason like Washington. And it was basically a Masonic Jihad against the remnant of the lost tribes of Israel. That was the whole point that everybody's missing. So every see, that's that's what I try to tell about people. Everybody's afraid to do anything because there's like, well, wouldn't that be kind of like acting like Christ. It's like, well, you're a Christian and that means Christ-like. So why are you afraid to act like Christ? You know, I mean, what's what, it, what's, what should we be doing that we're not? Well, number one, knowing would be a good start because right. people are, are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So it's a matter of not knowing because nobody's talking because the majority is under a spell of great deception and delusion to yeah, where, you know, that this Empire State huh? thing, like if uh, this Empire State thing, if you look at that and think that that l looks uh, like something good, uh, no, no, no. I'm saying if you do, I I cannot imagine that anyone looks at this and thinks, oh, that's a nice, pleasant thing there. I like what they're doing. It totally looks like, I mean, it looks like a devil or whatever, and it's got the three eyes. It's the same goddess that they've got outside of CERN. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I said CERN. It's the same goddess that they've got outside of CERN's labs. It's the same goddess that CERN is doing those weird dances to. It's all connected, man. It's, you know. it's the goddess of destruction. You know, they, they believe that things have to be destroyed in order for it to be reborn better. So they have no problem about just utterly destroying things because they believe that it's going to produce something better. That's why Nero fiddled while Rome burned. He could blame it on the Christians. And at the same time, he was under the same delusion that, you know, in order to well, he's under the spell of the goddess. That's the only way that you can create it by destroying it first. And that's what they're all about. And that's what they're all about. And it's the same bell worship from the get-go. So, I mean, you know, you have a, you have a paradise that was here. That was a, a land that was given to them by the, you know, the Cherokee and the Shawnee who proudly proclaimed God gave us this land. We're the proper caretakers of it. If they were still here, it would still be a paradise where they said you couldn't even walk without stepping on a berry. That the clouds in the, in the sky would not be clouds. It would actually be birds so plentiful. The water was so fresh and, and clean. And they said it was their favorite drink. You know, mm. and, and the surveyors and the people that came to this land said that the people were unusually just happy. Mm. You know, and you're talking about that paradise being taken by these Masons using Islamic law. 
okay, using the Islamic ideology of the sword, of using jihads and uprisings and false treaties and invading the lands and forcing people and subduing them and making them bow to their religion. And the whole time it's great deception making them think, oh, it's all Christianity, when it's nothing more than the bell worship disguised as Christianity. Okay. Yeah, and that's so, real. It's, I mean, it's, it's real sad, it's, dude. A, it's about justice. Well, dude, it's about justice. Justice will not be denied. Right. So everybody should be praying for a second coming of the person who was saying he was going to come. He had his sign, and this is this is the thing that blows my mind. Okay, because me and Tecumseh, we're we're we're, we're sharing the same house here. Okay, that's just the bottom line. I'm here to reclaim the capital, and mm. there's there's no shame in this game because. Christ, it's not taking away from his return. Oh, sure. His return is going to be a returning for for the nations. Mm -hmm. This is for my hometown. Okay. Because, see, I am Native American, and I am only German because of Andrew Jackson's policy of, you know, forcing the, the, the Native Americans to interbreed with the, the immigrants and, and become <laughs> Americans. You know, so Sarah by see me the day. Well, you're white. In my heart, okay, and in my blood is the Indian blood is still crying out for justice. So if anybody else wants the job to step up and take the capital back, have at it. But until then, I'm moving forward with it because it's all about justice and it's all about right. And for them to do the crimes that they did, I mean, if they was going to build a spiritual you know, establishment where things would be good and things would be right and we would have something of, of a decent, you know, like kingdom of God kind of thing, we could probably excuse that kind of stuff. But when they use it to build temples to this goddess of abortion to this goddess of homosexuality to this goddess of war and bloodshed you know to the this the most heinous of, of all goddesses she's the daughter of the devil that's her title okay it's just like the 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 hypocrisy of the the blasphemy of god begetting a son satan had a daughter mm. and that's what this chick is that's the state of the indiana so why would i not want justice to the point of if this is called Indianapolis, which means the capital of the Indians of which you slaughtered and, and lied and used false treaties and just about every crime you can think of to do what you did to establish an empire, a throne of a true religion, which is nothing more than pagan pantheon and, and polytheism. You know, I, for one, if no one else is taking the job, I'll take the job. And this is, this is what blows my mind. This is what blows my mind real quick because Tecumseh knew about messengers. Okay, he knew about messengers and he knew about a prophet and he knew that it was one of those things to where people, it's a generation of vipers, they just got to have a sign. Okay, because no one's going to believe anything nowadays, even if you do give them a sign. But Tecumseh was the only person in, the, in history that we know of that not only foretold an earthquake, he declared one. He said he was going to go to a certain city at a certain time and stomp his foot. And the earthquake would ring from there all the way to the East Coast, majorly, to where it would be a sign for all the tribes to unite together and understand that what he was saying was true. And it was too late. Okay? Right. And so look up the earthquakes of 1811. Look up exactly what happened. So you have a person who was known as a prophet who gave the sign, not just foretold or forecast a tornado or a flood or a hurricane, but said that he was going to predict an earthquake by stomping his foot. And so me, knowing what I feel inside and what I know is true and knowing what needs to be done and no one else doing it, there's got to be something to be said about this. So if he did it and Wright was on his side, then that's what it would take here. And it was on a radio show that we did. And you can blog talk radio. You can go to it and listen to it. And I declared the same thing as what Tecumseh did, that I am going to go to Washington, D.C. I'm going to go to the Washington Monument. I am going to stomp my foot. And there will be an earthquake, and it will be a sign, and it will be the evidence that what I'm saying is true. If you can't look up the history books yourself and find out what I'm saying is true, and this will no longer be a capital that belongs to this goddess because it doesn't belong to her. Okay? So right, right is on our side. And we said it. We declared it. 
and it happened. So if you need evidence that Tecumseh is back in town and he wants his capital back, all to the glory of his God, Yah, okay, well, then they're going to have to deal with that because I'm here, okay, and I'm now. You're, you are and the second happening. coming. You are the second coming of Tecumseh? That's pretty much what I'm saying. Now, is 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 that, <clears throat> is it? Are there other people, you know, can I, can I be involved with that? Or are you the only guy that's the second coming of Tecumseh? Well, I mean, everybody can be involved in, in, in being right and standing up for what's right. But this is a matter of, this is like a personal thing. Okay. Right. This is like a personal thing between that spirit known of Tecumseh. That, when I, I'm, I'm not talking about the person. The same spirit that was in Elijah is in me. The same spirit that was in John the Baptist is in me. The same spirit of Tecumseh is in me. People understood the possibilities of that. If they could only comprehend the possibilities of that. It, it, right, yeah. I'm Oops. with you on that. Now, are they, is, is that spirit in all Christians or just you? Oh, well, I don't think you need a whole bunch of Tecumsehs. It's just one of those things to where you need one person who's willing to stand up and say, this is wrong. And it's, it's not, it has nothing to do with me. Right. Okay. Has, isn't it, it has nothing to do with celebrity. It right. has nothing to do with selling books. I, the information that I'm talking about right now is on uh, Amazon and it's free. So if you want to look it up and get all the historic facts and exactly what went down, there it is. Look it up. And that's the way it is. And it's, 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 it's it's not about Tecumseh, and it's not about me. It's about that spirit of right and truth that is doing battle with these principalities and powers in high places. Right. And that's what this is all about. And this is about a city. You know, Christ says, I will make you kings and princes to rule over the nations. Not only is he coming back to rule, but he gives us domain of our domain. And the only way he does that is when we take the opportunity to establish our domain. If right. you're here and you know the pagans have done something which is in constant violation of their own law, in direct violation of their own constitutional law, where they're giving preferences to pagan you know, polytheism and pretending to be Christians while they're committing genocide against Christians, okay, it's time to speak up. Establish your domain. You've got right on your side. You've got truth on your side. All you have to stand up is just stand up and speak out and say it's not happening. Because it's, it's just that small act of standing up and speaking out in the physical realm that, number one, you're not under the spell. You're not under no you know great deception. You have the spirit of truth that leads and guides you into all things. And as long as you always acknowledge the Creator, as long as you acknowledge the Word of God, the only begotten Son, if you acknowledge Yah, you have nothing to fear. He said, greater works than these will you do. Right. Now, somebody's going to say, well, it's not going to walk on water because that would be blasphemous toward Christ. Because, right. No, 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 no. He gives us that opportunity. He said, greater works than these shall you do. So everything that he did, he's given us the ability to do greater works. But all we've got to do is accept that as truth and believe it and give a thanks appreciation to the one who gave you that power. And it's not about me. And it's not about to come. It's about this goddess who's taken paradise and corrupted it. And got us all under bondage to where we think we're free, and we're serving nothing but her. <laughs> I I'm shocked, appalled, and a little bit embarrassed, honestly. You know that um that I I'm you know that that's happened to all of us, and we are all fine with it. Oh yeah, because we're all complexes, you know, and that's that's the thing why you know the church can turn its head and not say anything because well they're getting something good out of it. You know, now the, the apathy they got today to where they see their spiritual brothers and sisters being beheaded and crucified and burned alive and not saying anything about it. Well, what they're getting out of it for that, well, they feel like they're safe because nobody hmm. will say anything to them as long as they don't say, no, you got it all wrong. These people think, well, if we treat them nice and be good to them, they'll be good to us. No, according to the foundation hmm. of their religion, it is they must kill you because you insulted Islam with the greatest of insult by saying that God begat a son. Even though the original Allah begat you know, three daughters of Allah, you know, but after, you know, Muhammad came, he just, he just used the name of Allah, but he didn't, uh, you know, carry on the, the triple goddess, but that's where the Masons came into play because they did adopt the three daughters of Allah. And that's why you see her statue of Liberty, in New York, the sun goddess 
Statue of Freedom, Washington, D.C., on top of the Capitol, the moon goddess. The Statue of Victoria on top of the obelisk, downtown Monument Circle, the earth goddess. There's your triple goddess. There's your three fates. There's the, the unholy trinity. There's the goddess of the crossroads. That goddess that you saw in the Empire State Building, yeah, it's evil. It's wicked. Yeah, it is evil. Yeah, it is wicked. And yeah, it's because the state of Indiana made a big mistake by, by changing it into a, a goddess. You know, you can thank Senator Dick Luger for, for Obama and for Ishtar or ISIS, however you want to call it. Hey, shout out to Dick Luger there. What's going on, buddy? Why, why don't you do making some better choices there? Yeah. Do yeah. you do you get involved in politics, Stephen? I mean, at the local level, because like you said, I mean, we're we're yeah. one step away from this guy. Like, why don't we just go have a meeting with this guy and say, hey? Oh, and, and I I lose a lot of people who otherwise would you know listen now and then. But when you start talking about I don't vote, it's like, well, you can't say anything if you don't vote. It's like you know your vote number one. What's going to happen? What was foretold? Was prophesied? Will happen? And your vote is not going to veto any of that. And when you think about it, regardless of who sits in the throne of Washington, that throne is an abomination because, well, <laughs> it's the throne that he's ascending into the heavens to make himself equal to God. So regardless of who it is, they're representing the son of perdition, the one who is sitting in his temple currently today in the Holy of Holies, which was what Rotunda means, as he who mounts the clouds seated on his rainbow, surrounded by his host and his heavenly host. His host just happens to be the three daughters of Allah, and his heavenly host just happens to be the pagan pantheon, restored to their proper places of honor. And I'm sure that was probably some deal that they made with the pagan gods, that if they could win a war, they would give them their proper places of honor once again. And you would have a Christian nation who doesn't give preference to one religion over the other, having its nation's capital be the house of your pagan pantheon, and your founding father being declared to be God. Okay, and you Christian pastors ain't got no problem with that, but you'd have a problem if you saw me smoking a cigarette. How dare you? I mean, really, how dare you? you yeah, I, 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 no. I don't know. I don't know. I'm with I'm with you. Like it's <clears throat> if if uh, if I had to talk to you know God Himself today, I expect Him to be shame on you. You know, and I don't. I know He's not. I know, but I'm just saying. It's like I'm embarrassed that we as a human race couldn't get it together more. And the more I learn about this stuff that you're talking about, the worse it gets. You know, just the, the worse it gets. Just the, it makes that's you a, feel disgusting. Hypocrisy. Yeah, it makes you feel dirty. The, the hypocrisy of it all is saying that they was going to eradicate the savages because they're primitive and superstitious. And here we are in such a technologically advanced world that we're going to have images of the goddess up on the Empire State Building. And we're going to have a nation's capital that does nothing but give honor to these pagan superstitions. Okay? And, and they justified genocide because, well, the savages were superstitious. Hmm. Amazing. Yeah. And I just want to say, um, th everything, I don't know much about this stuff, but I'm, as you're talking, I was looking it up. Every, I've, I read on a website, it checks out everything you just said. It checks out. So anybody out there listening saying, oh, or is anyone fact checking this? You know, did this really Prove happen? It wrong. I just Prove did. It wrong. I just proved it wrong. No, I, I didn't. I didn't, you know, but I, it, yeah, the impressive, here's, here's on the eight, what is it? Eight, 1812 CA. If you trust uh, the California <laughs> domain system. Uh, yeah, the specter of war, the impressive new Shawnee village with 200 houses was called Prophetstown by the whites for Tecumseh's brother who continued preaching and who changed his name to Ten Squatawa, meaning open door. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? And then it goes on to say what, exactly what you said about um, while Tecumseh was absent. Oh, yeah, Tecumseh went to visit Canada, it says. And then while he was gone or whatever. Uh, well, he, has, he actually went down south to the Cree at the time. But then after he came back and saw Prophet's Town destroyed, he went on into Canada and he took on the British officer's uniform as a general and fought in the War of 1812. And that's where he got killed, and that was the end of the movement, and destiny was being manifested by the powerful Masonic Roman Empire and their jihad, and just as it was written, had power and authority was given to him to overcome the saints. And that's exactly what happened. 
But then you have Christians saying, well, God bless George Washington. <laughs> like, if, you read, if you read Revelations, okay, and you read how power and authority was given to this final kingdom, if they would only obey the serpent's voice and make the graven image contrary to God's commandment not to make the graven image, then you'd understand why they got the power and authority. But you see, Washington comes in, he wipes everybody out, and everybody gets their goodies, and it's like, Washington's a godly man. I mean, I just had a conversation with a pastor on television, you know, talking about the apotheosis. He's like, Washington was a godly man. I was like, well, then I guess you discard, you know, slavery, you discard that he was, you know, the biggest whiskey distiller. He, he had the most land, was a greedy land company owner, was guilty of genocide, making false treaties, traitor to the crown. Okay. I mean, think about it. You can't even hardly think of a crime that he didn't commit. And he was a <laughs> godly man. Are you kidding me? Regardless of all that, I'm not judging him. I'm judging Washington. And that currently stands that he is declared to be God and nobody's saying nothing. And, he, and all these, all these, the whole city of Indianapolis is built for the purpose and glorification of this goddess. And, and why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you want to challenge that just for justice purposes alone? Yeah. You know, or, or even just to have a dialogue about it. Like, cause there is no other side to it. There is no, open dialogue like you know yeah like they just say oh that's crazy I, they don't address it people don't address it I, and you, you know you try to talk to them and they find some way to not address it or write it off or you're crazy or well then there's only one option isn't there it's just kind of like yeah. a destruction destruction option well hopefully okay. not that's what that's what this whole cali thing is they want destruction you know i i don't i don't want to go and destroy stuff but you know like, no i'm not talking about us destroying things because it's to right. the point now to where it's too late they've already had their signs they've already had their warnings they've already had their chances and it's it's just like the pan statue yeah there's a pan statue back up there so what was accomplished was anything accomplished yeah everything was accomplished they can put it back up there because all that does is prove the word to be true to where it says they repented not of the sins, of their works of their hands, of making the images. Okay? So, yeah, it doesn't matter at this point because it's, it's too late at this point. Now comes God's wrath, God's judgment. We don't have to take up arms against anybody or do anything because we will be saying, ooh, you guys getting ready to get smacked down. Boom, you get smacked down. I mean, when you can say something and it actually happened, okay, there's no defense against that. There is no defense against God's coming wrath, okay? The judgment's already here. You've already heard the prosecuting attorney give you the evidence. You can look it up and research it yourself when you go back as your jury pool, but you got to come up with a conclusion. Are you part of this system down here? Are you voting, hoping that, you know, you'll get a Christian leader like Bush in office and things will be hunky dory? <laughs> Are you going to realize the foundation of your house is fragmented? It's faulty. It's wrong. The house will not stand and do what the word of God tells you to his last instructions. Very clear, very precise, very easy to comprehend. Be ye separate. Come out from among them. Come out of her. Be separate. Because I tell you what, when the things start happening on this planet and the things start coming down and things start happening on this planet, Mm. The only ones who's going to be able to stand are the ones who are obedient to that warning and instruction and said, you know what, if God wanted me to vote, he would have given me candidates. And I can't really justify any sort of way voting for the lesser of two evils because I'm still giving my vote to put something evil in power. Yeah. Okay, when you know about the Bushes and all the churches talking about it, your duty to vote, and Bush is the one you need to because he's a <laughs> Christian, and then find out his stuff about his assistance to Islam, about his you know, pin that he just mandates for the first time in the history of America that government can start funding religious organizations with tax dollars. And guess who's the benefactor? Oh, well, the Catholics and the Islamists, of course. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, don't, perfect. yeah, don't, don't be fooled. Don't believe the hype. You know, he said, we are not of this world. When somebody says, well, why don't you vote? I just ask him, well, what would Jesus do? You know, I'll keep it simple for you. What would Jesus do? Would yeah. You vote? Would he vote or would he say we are not of this world? Well, you know, I don't know. He, he, he says give Caesar his taxes or whatever, you know. A render under Caesar that which belongs to Caesar and things under God which belongs to God. Well, what belongs to God? Everything. Praise, 
honor, and glory belong to God. And what did they give Washington? Praise, honor, and glory. Okay, yeah. Washington's image on something, give it back to him. There, God ain't got nothing for with the image of, of Washington. We ain't got nothing to do with the image of Washington. We ain't got that nothing to do with the image of his great seal of authority, the actual graven image that the serpent asked him to make in order to get the power and authority, in order to subdue the saints. So that way the deceived saints would say, you know what? Well, God, God was on Washington's side because, well, it all happened. Mm. Well, so that's what, that's what you know. Satan said to him. He said, "Build this graven image, and it will, de it will have the power to deceive Revelation, people." Read Revelation thirteen. The the serpent's last temptation of man is what I like to call it. To where he says, "Make the graven image." Okay, that's his last temptation to man. Okay, you had the, the original temptation in the garden. You had Christ paying the price, and then Satan comes with the final temptation to man: make the graven image, and I will give you power and authority to rule. Why? How could he give him power and authority to rule? Well, Satan is the Lord of the earth and has the power already to rule, so he can give it to whoever he wants to. But he will give it to the kingdom that obeys his voice. And what is his desire? To disobey God's law, to make him superior. So man will worship Satan instead of the creator. So they will be obeying the serpent's voice instead of obeying the creator's voice. To, to actually disobey the second commandment, which is the only commandment that has a warning attached to it not to do it. It just so happens that the final temptation of man, the serpent's offer to this final kingdom of Antichrist is, if you make this graven image, I will give you power and authority to rule. So what do they do? They make this graven image. What do they call it? The great seal of authority. Because that is the image that was responsible for giving them the authority to rule, giving them the power to overcome the saints, giving them the technologies and, and knowledge of warfare, just like Dr. Gatlin, who went downtown to the governor's mansion, this haunted, spooky place that they use for sacrificing, you know, orphan kids to get rid of the orphan problem from the war and to do medical experiments on them. And kids were down there. And Indianapolis Star has stories about this where people heard kids screaming in this place. Okay. Yeah. And the Indianapolis Star said they did an investigation and they went down some of the tunnels and they found it was a wild turkey. Okay, that was the Indianapolis Star's story because, well, the Indianapolis Star has been behind it the whole time. Their front headlines say, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And they put the Corinthians verse, like, you know, here's, here's what we believe. And in their front yard, they're the ones who donated the, the statue of Pan, the universal symbol of paganism. Yeah, I mean, that's two-faced. Yeah. Yeah, it's all part of the big, big okie doke they call Indianapolis. <laughs> well, that's that's seriously heavy, man. I mean, the, like I think we're just scratching the surface on on that thing, man. Uh, the but so what? What what else do you think we should we should do about this? Or I mean, I don't know even <laughs> what to nothing, ask. Like this is all new nothing, to me. There's nothing we can do except know the truth. And once you know the truth, you can set yourself free from that great spell of deception and strong delusion because you know the truth. You're not wishful thinking. You're not hoping. You're not, you know, brainwashed by, by patriotism, propaganda, anything that's not true. I don't want it. It's just like December 25th. It's like, why can't you celebrate Christ's birth on December 25th? It's like, think about it. We know what that's not when it was. We don't know when it was. So it must not be really important or we would know when it was. But one thing I do know, it wasn't on the exact birthday of Bell, you know, <laughs> with this consort Ishtar here, because his birthday was December 25th. Right. And the Bible wouldn't say, what communion has light with the darkness? What fellowship has Christ with Bell. What association is there? Now, it wouldn't ask that question if they both had the same birthday because well, it would be a redundant question. It'd be like, what did they have in common? Well, they got the same birthday. Right. But that's not the case. <laughs> so, right. so, so think about it. Think about your most worst arch enemy and think about people saying that they love you and they know you and they worship you and serve you, yet they're going to celebrate your birthday on your enemy's birthday. Now, isn't that pleasant? That's you know? If it ain't truth, I don't want it. That's Period. not something I wanted on my on my conscience, you know. <laughs> no, no. That's what I'm saying. It's worth looking. It's worth finding out truth. I mean, it may be painful and it may be, you know, frightening, you know. But that's why Revelation, when it talked about it, it goes, "Take the book and eat it, digest it. In your mouth, it'll be sweet because you realize that all these things are true, and your redemption draweth nigh. And you didn't live in vain when you lived for Christ or died for Christ. It was all for reality because it's real." 
But he said, but then it's going to be bitter in your stomach. Why is that? Because then once you digest and it's down in your stomach, you realize, hey, I happen to be in Babylon. It's getting ready to get destroyed. Mm, right. So, yeah, you know, that's a bit. I've been part of something very, very evil and saying it's very, very good. Right. I've been watching atrocities and not saying a peep about it. Right. Okay. I, I got spiritual brother and sisters being crucified and executed and persecuted with great persecution. And I'm going to preach about prosperity. Prosperity. <laughs> I mean, it is, it is a shame. I don't but understand. What we're gonna do? There's nothing we can do. And it's a it's fine really line there with that, you know. I mean, because there, I mean, there's a time and place for some like serious information like that, and it's probably not, you know, while the three year olds are around or whatever. But I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, what? Because people, you try to post stuff like that on Facebook, and people will be like, "Oh, you know, I, I'm totally, I totally support what you're doing. I just don't want to see this stuff on my on my timeline, you know." So don't. Yeah, you know. it's too it's too horrific. I don't want to see a board of babies. I don't want to have to see what I'm part of. Right. I don't want to have to see what I'm condoning and approving of by my silence. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, th those people, I send it to them all the time. They <laughs> need to see it. Those are the ones who need to see the evil. They are the ones who need to see it in order to motivate them to do something because they're not doing anything and they're not going to do anything until they see exactly the extent of the evil and how God sees it. God has to look at it. Do you think they're more special than God? They don't have to. If yeah. God has to see it, then why shouldn't they have to see it, especially when they're the cause of it? Yeah. And the, the cause, cause of it is being not stopping it. Yeah. And I, I get that, you know, we all, it's like, well, the first step after you learn some crazy stuff like that is, well, what do you do? You know, and you, I think you go through kind of a depression and stuff like that. But I mean, you know, like you said, what there's not much you can do because it's so bad and it's meant to be, but at the same time you can spread the, the, um, the word. Cause you were saying that, that spreading the message, that's what kind of breaks the spell. Like, like telling people solid information and facts, that's what will get them just, out of the just spell. Tell, tell them what they don't see. Tell right. them what they don't see. It's just like that 10 commandments monument. I had a pastor come up to me when I was protesting it and he goes, how could you possibly protest the Ten Commandments? <laughs> right. And he but, introduced hey, himself you know as a, introduced him it's a, a pastor. Right. He introduced it, it, himself as a pastor. I said, well, pastor, I said, you make a living off the people teaching them this stuff, right? And he goes, well, yeah, I guess you could say that. And I said, well, then you should be able to tell me what the Ten Commandments are, right? So then he looks around my head and he looks at the Ten Commandments. He mm -hmm. goes, thou shalt... And I said, I said, no, you, you should have them written in your heart, right? I mean, if you're a pastor, you should know the Ten Commandments, right? I said, these aren't even the Ten Commandments. He goes, well, what do you mean? It says right there, Ten Commandments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Count the numbers down. Let me know there was Ten Commandments there. <laughs> and I, I said, well, what's the most important commandment on there? I said, you know, the second commandment, the one with a warning attached to it, not to make engraven images of these other gods because, well, there's something important about that commandment if it's, the only one with a warning attached to it, it could be because in Revelation, that's when the serpent is, you know, released on man. And he says, uh, you make the graven image and I'll give you power and authority to rule. And so it is. That warning was to prevent this from happening, but they disobeyed mm. and they refused to repent. I that's said, so where is the second commandment on this display here? And he looked at it and he's like, oh, it's not there. And I said, yeah, it's not there. He goes, well, how's there 10? I said, well, look at the ninth commandment. Thou shalt not covet. I said, look at the 10th commandment. Thou shalt not covet. I said, they took the 10th commandment and they divided it, made it into two separate commandments to make up for the second commandment that they removed. And I, he goes, well, why would they do that? I said, take a closer look at it. Right underneath the inscription, right above the inscription where it says, I am the Lord thy God. I said, what image is that? He goes, it's an eye. I said, no, it'd be more correct. It's a, it's, it's a breasted sun goddess. It's the sun goddess with breast. Okay? It represents uh, Ishtar. It represents the triple goddess. Yeah, that's the probably it's like it's one of the, the biggest god of, uh, you know, the pharaohs and stuff that you was in bondage to that God freed you from, remember? Yeah, it's just a slap in the face is basically what it is. It's just a slap in the face, you know, on purpose to Christians to, and not even to Christians to God. It's not yeah, they're not trying to piss us off. They're trying to piss off God, right? They're like, God, you said pagans, do this. See, well, you gotta understand the MO of pagans. Pagans delight in desecration. There's a reason why they delight in desecration. And there's a reason why they always want what is yours and what is sacred. Because it's just like the Philistines when they capture the Ark of the Covenant, what did they do with it? They wanted to put it next to their God Dagon. Because that's what pagans do. They like to take the pure and combine it with the profane. Why is that? 
Well, because that's their source of power. And not only is it their source of power, the antithesis that it produces is a spell of strong delusion. So you don't see the evil involved with it. All you do is you see a monument of the Ten Commandments and say, oh, the state capitol is promoting my face. It really, whoo, whoo, whoo. Right. Not realize, no, the pagans, you know, inside the house of honor is where the goddess sits. Outside of the house is where your Ten Commandments sits. And look how shamefully handled it's been. The state's not a proper caretaker of something so sacred as the Ten Commandments. Yeah, they might have good intentions. So did the, the, the good intentions of the, of the soldier who went to put his arm up to stabilize the ark when it was being traveled and it was rocking back and forth. And he put his hand up to stabilize it. Those are pretty good intentions. He dropped dead because the law was you don't touch it. <laughs> Right. <laughs> well, so much for good intentions, you know, even if they had good intentions. The, the, the bottom line is there's Ten Commandments, actually nine, that was desecrated and profaned by the pagans, and they're put up all across the nation. You hear all these Christians saying, they are wanting to take away our Ten Commandments monument. No, they really want it up there because it's the doorway. You know, it kind of like opens it up so they can have their statues of Baphomet so the Islamists can come in and talk about Allah and all these other things that are currently going on. So they can justify having the triple goddess in the house chambers. Well, because you've got the Ten Commandments monument outside, so you've got to allow it now. Which yeah. is why we say be separate, not unite with them. Don't be partners with them. Don't assist them in any way. That's the word. Yeah, they put this thing up there. We didn't want it there. You know, there's no... You know, Christians, there's no Christians that put the thing there, right? The Ten Commandments. Oh, the original, the original excuse they gave me was, was they put up during the time of, of the, the Ten Commandments movie with Charlton Heston, and they was promoting the movie. And it's like, oh, since fuck. when the state capitals go around promoting movies? I mean, yeah. really, think about it. And why is it the Masonic organizations are the ones that donated it? And why do the Masons get to have their sun goddess image, you know, desecrating the Ten Commandments? And why isn't any pastors protesting it? Why do I got to go sit in a jail and be away from my family because nobody else would do anything about it? Now, that's the question that I have, you know, the, that's the biggest one. Because I can understand all the rest of it, I don't know, because Satan is a jerk and he likes to screw everything up for God. <laughs> or try to, or us. He likes to screw it up for us. He likes to screw us up as much as possible. That's why all that stuff. But why, I guess the same thing. Why, uh, why aren't other Christians out there with you? Well, first of all, I didn't, you know, I'll tell you why I wasn't there. I didn't know you were protesting, you know, and I, I don't, I, I don't expect anybody. To be no, there. I know, it, but, it, I know, but, no, but what I'm saying is, you know, to show something. It's uh, to prove a point that I know, people but need you to understand. Have it. to be the only one, and you know, um, it's, is, uh, it's over with now. Now, the it, right you're saying that it's over with. Um, the challenge is done. We've won. We've won in the city county building when they try to put the witch's pentagram up next to the menorah. We won. The Ten Commandments at the state capitol. We won. The pan statue. We won. Now you can say, well, the pan's still up there, but guess what? They did the biggest mistake of all by putting it back up. Why? Because it's a fertility god. He has an erect penis. They thought, well, the penis is bothering me, so they put the, the statue of their god, their fertility god, back up as an impotent god and that causes all kinds of problems when you talk about no longer having power and authority because you disrespected your own deity and it's because of their own ignorance i guess yeah that's really funny if that's if that's why because they're more no, they, i don't know i said, guess it's just watered down you know they probably don't even sweeney, know wh why they're doing sweeney, it anymore. <laughs> yeah sweeney the guy that's in charge of everything he was quoted in the Indianapolis star saying he believes that the I have a problem with the erect penis of Pan. You know, totally I have a problem. Totally miss the point. Totally miss the point. You know, I have a problem with you know state violating its own law and putting it, the pagans got up on a pedestal in University Park when you couldn't even have a picture of Christ around there anywhere. But <laughs> you can have Pan on his pedestal on University Park, fertility god and all, and his daughter, okay, up on her pedestal, breast exposed, young children dancing around naked, and she's playing the cymbals, okay, up on her pedestal, right in front of her temple. Okay, so, really, like I said before, they're the ones breaking the law, and it was like the Ten Commandments, the Indianapolis Star, nobody wanted to do anything about it, toppled it many times, Many times they kept setting it up. They knew who it was. They knew what was going on. They didn't want to do anything. They didn't want to do any part of Indiana history. They just wanted me to go away. <laughs> go away. And that's when I contacted the Jewish Post and Opinion, another newspaper in Indiana, since the Indianapolis Star News is like the only paper for Indianapolis or Indiana. Yeah, okay. 
contacted them and said, the reason the state isn't doing anything to me and they know that it's me doing this is because they're the ones who's breaking the law. And they know the reason I'm doing this is trying to draw attention to the fact of the law they're breaking and exactly to the extent of what laws they are actually breaking. That's why they can't do anything to me. And, and that's what forced their hand to actually come to my work and actually do something because I called them out saying, yeah, they know, but they refused to do something. This is like four months later. So I had to actually force them to put me in jail so I could do my time for this. Okay. It's been easy to get away with it. It's just like the pan situation. Okay. They don't want to do anything about it because they know they're wrong and they know that I'm the law enforcer in this situation. Okay. With every case in downtown, three in a row, strike three, they're out, they're done. We won every single one of them. Okay. Yeah, because they're like in the wrong. It's, it's just like the pan. They knew about it, and Will Higgins was a reporter for the Indianapolis Star. Nobody wanted to write about it. Nobody wanted to do nothing. And I called up Will Higgins, and I said, hey, Will, I'll tell you what. I'll give you a personal story about pan. I'll come clean. I'll tell you the whole story. I'll even show you the statue itself if you'll just write the truth in the paper. And he's yeah. like, it's a deal. It's a deal. So he came and he met me, and we walked down to a dry riverbed, and behind this log, there sat Pan. And he looked at it, and he goes, I'm a believer. And we walked back up to the car, and we talked, and we talked, and I gave him the whole story, and this, that, and the other. Okay? He got in his car, and I got in my car, and he pulled away, and here comes an undercover Camaro and a black state police pulling up. And I'm pulling out and pulling away. And he's just looking at me like, now what do I do? Because surely he's going to go back and get it. So regardless, I went my own way and they went down there and well, it wasn't there. It mm. just wasn't there. And Will Higgins went down there and it just wasn't there. And they saw me leave and they knew I didn't have it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. Three, and they call this Indian as long as run a mystery. Hmm. There's your mystery right there. Okay. Yeah, they didn't even they didn't even do a good job with the with what's it. I mean, that was that was a that's a pretty dramatic story, you know. Like the story is you did some crazy, you know, just from a secular point of view, like what the news story, you know, the guy, the guy having to decide what goes in the paper. Here's a story where, you know, I went and followed this guy and he had a statue. He stole it for some reason. He did this, that, and the other. And then it vanished. Oh, I got, I got all it the vanished. clippings. The statue all the clippings vanished. The book. You, you, you ought to read some, some of the stuff from Ruth I, I and Wiggins. I read I mean, the ones was, I could find. It was, it, they totally missed. They didn't even, they, it's like WCW. <laughs> They they just suck. Like they did not print. It. They didn't make it interesting. They made it sound. It, it was just boring. And that's probably they probably did it on purpose. That Will Higgins guy didn't sound like he even understood what he was even writing about. Right. And he didn't even talk about how it vanished. You know, which oh. it wasn't really a miracle, right? I mean, it was just just something that happened, but it vanished. And that wasn't in the well, in the article all- I read. Yeah, yeah. And and the funny thing, the cherry on top of the whole Sunday is how it all ended. It's like, well, are they going to put me in jail like they did for the commandments? Am I going to have to pay for this one the same way? Here's how it ended. A high noon showdown. Now, now here's the power you got when you're Jedi, so to speak. You know what I mean? You can go in there and say, I'll tell you what we'll do about this, boys. Here's how we're going to settle this, okay? You know I'm doing it, and you know why I'm doing it, and you don't want any attention, and you know I ain't going to quit. So how are we going to settle this? Let's have a high noon showdown. <laughs> Well, they get all set up. And I've got, you know, my two witnesses go down there and represent me, you know, and, you know, they stand there and they see the cops on each corner and they got their hands on their pistol and they're waiting for a big, big shooting showdown, a high noon showdown. They, you know why? Because I used to work law enforcement and I know there's nothing to motivate the cop like trying to tell them we're going to have a high noon showdown. <laughs> Did you? So you called for that. You said, we're going to settle this with a high noon showdown and they bought it with that. <laughs> <laughs> and it was even in the paper. What's a morons, man? That's a joke. <laughs> that, that I had called for a high noon showdown. So dig I it. did. I, I did see that, but they spun it like you're the idiot. <laughs> Who cares? Check it out. I, I did, do. and I walked away free. And you know why? Because we had a high noon showdown, and they ended up thinking that they had won. Right. So they were happy. They were happy, dude. They were happy. We won the high noon showdown. Okay, now wait a minute. Is this is this sci-fi or what? You're gonna tell me that a guy does this and he's done it for like years, taking an arm each year to diminish its power. Okay, and you can't catch him. You can't figure him out. And on the day that you say the Indianapolis 500 is going to come to town and we're gonna have plain clothes and Homeland Security is involved and it's gonna be the biggest security we ever had downtown Indianapolis. You got all the bleachers up. You got all the 
the, the, the police tape off everything, and that's the night you you, you lose your god. <laughs> really? I mean, think about it. Of all the times for that to happen, it's one of those things where they know, just like I know, this is reality. And one of us is right and the other side is wrong. One of us wins, the other side loses. One of us actually has the power and authority and truth and right and justice on the side. And the other one's got the deception and the scam and the shady little hide and the secret, dark, evil kind of stuff. Right. Okay. And light comes forth and the darkness flees. And that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be the light to where we stand up. We speak out. We say the truth that nobody else sees. Hopefully it'll, they, they, they'll shake the groggy sleep off and get over the spell of strong delusion and stop you know, trying to unite what they shouldn't be partakers of and be separate and try to keep what is separate, separate from that, which those, those trying to profane it. And then they'll find out they do have the power and authority to do greater things than Christ did. Not saying that we're right. better than Christ. We're just saying that his word is true and he foretold it. I will give you this opportunity, this power and authority to do greater things than I do. If, if only what? If only we believe. Right. If only we believe what saying is true and we try it out and it's true. It's just like stomping my foot saying there's going to be an earthquake to the National Monument. Now, now, now when you think about that, you say, mm, something's wrong with the guy. But if you know that it's true, you know it's happened in the past, the Bible ain't lying about these things, and you've got the opportunity to do it, I'm not too concerned if anybody wants to throw rocks at me and say I'm blasphemous or not. As long as I give credit to credit, it's due, and I'm you know, fighting the principalities and powers in the high places, you better take it up with God because I'm kind of busy. Right. Yeah, I, I feel what you're saying. You know, I'm just saying, you know, people people wonder. So, you know, just try to, try to clear those roadblocks out before they, you know, before we even hear about them so they can be prepared to hear the message. And that's the other thing I was going to say is, man, People don't know about that in the past. Like, I didn't know about this Tecumseh snopping his foot and whatnot. And, you know, that's because they, they've they changed history, right? We don't learn this stuff. We learn the white man's history. Is that right? Well, yeah. I mean, if you see how they're changing history today, just think about all the time that they've had to change history, to demonize the good guys, to, to glorify the actual bad guys, and to make you partakers of the evil so you can't say anything against it because you're a co-conspirator when you think about it. Yeah. And your app produces silence, which is the voice of approval. So you're kind of guilty. That's why the word says to be separate, come out of her, don't assist in any way. Because you already are, and you just don't know it. Right. Yeah. So if I say, hey, the state of Indiana is actually a goddess, is actually a pagan goddess, they're actually violating all their laws and giving preference to the pagan pantheon. Your house of representatives is a house of, a house of Hathor. A house of Horus, it's a Hathor. It's it's the whore goddess. It's the goddess that demands fetal sacrifice. That's why you've got it going on. It's the one that demands high priests have to be gay. Okay. Mm. I mean, think about it. It, it kind of shows you the fruit of the tree. If the tree is Christianity, we wouldn't be having this kind of fruit. But if we have the goddess as the so-called God in which we trust, okay, well, then obviously you're going to have these fruits that we see on this tree. Yeah, and it's some, some per fairly perverted fruits. Yeah, it don't get much more evil than what it goes. And that's the thing about evil. When you let it go, it just doesn't <laughs> remain just the evil that it currently is. It always digresses to worse and worse and worse and worse. And there's right. no end to the depth of evil. And that's why it's probably good to set a standard and say, no, at least once. Because if you don't, it's just sort of like Farrakhan. Farrakhan put a fatwa on Malcolm X and had him killed. He said he's worthy to die, and he got killed. Now Farrakhan's talking about killing whites and cops, and the feds are saying it's protected political speech. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's a reverend. He's tax exempt. He can't be given no political speeches. Uh, so you got the not knowing what the IRS law is, or they understand that the IRS is so rogue and so outlaw that they persecute you know, Christian white conservatives, and they give breaks to Muslims and black supremacists like Farrakhan. And let him, you know, endorse Obama like Farrakhan did. Had a big, huge picture of Obama on his stage preaching about the virtues of this is the man for the world. Okay, kind of things. The IRS, you think they'd do anything? No. He can talk about killing cops. 
<laughs> because South Shelton's groups are talking about killing cops, so they can't say that he did anything wrong. So mm-hmm. of course it's 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 protected political speech, which reverends can't be doing that. You know, so the IRS is in cahoots, the feds are in cahoots. It's all just just craziness when you think about it. I mean, it's it's absolute craziness. It is. I crazy. mean, it's no, it's no different than his Islamic speakers getting up talking about. He wants ten thousand guys that's that's willing to die. They don't want to live on this planet. They're, they're under this oppression. This, that, and the other. We, you know, past four hundred years, they really should go back to Africa and see what they've been missing for the past four hundred years, and and start being thankful that they've had such a pampered life. Okay. And, and start respecting a lot of these people they think are their enemy and are white because they own slaves when actually their relatives were actually ones who spilled their blood, making sure that all men are created, treated equally and free. Okay. Right. And it's this whole message that is, 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 is just killing me that he's allowed to get away with inciting violence. And why is he doing it and getting away with it? Well, because he's done it before and got away with it. So, see, that's what happens when you let somebody get away with murder. Now it's not just one person. It's a whole race. It's a, it's a whole group of cops. And the reason the feds don't say that, that you know, inciting violence or soliciting murder is a, a crime, you know why they don't say that? Because Islamic law encourages fatwas. Right. It's Islamic law that encourages that kind of terrorism to strike terror. There's a problem with the internet connection. Oh, that's okay. I'm... Used to the phone going dead in certain situations and conversations. <laughs> well, right. Well, I, I want to bring this back to home here, but so you mentioned it just flippantly, but you have you have you wrote a book and it's called Red Justice: The Second Coming of Tecumseh. Yes, I did. Yeah, um, it's on and Kindle. I, I, a, I, I just bought it. it. Well, it's supposed to be free. I got a thing going until the. Uh, 22nd of September where it's free, so you should be able to just download it for free. Now, see, that's what I thought. I don't know if I paid for it or not. I just clicked the button that says... I don't I don't think so. I don't have an account set up to it about uh, oh, a few months back. I shut it all down to where they were supposed to be free. Oh, no, it's, and then, it's, it's $3.99, Stephen. Huh. Well, I wonder where all that money is going, because I'm not getting any of it. <laughs> oh, that's... Uh, we should look into that. Because exactly what you said, if you, someone's getting money for it, not you, then we should put a stop to that. But yeah, it's he. You want it for free, but the white man has hijacked it for three ninety nine. That's a good. That's a decent Kindle price. Uh, go check it out, guys. Uh, maybe it'll be free when you find this. We want it to be free, but the white man is, is killing us over here. Is making money off of Stephen. But I'm. I really want to read this book, man. I did not know you had a book, Stephen. No, I got I got uh, actually four. I got uh, letters from St. Michael. I got American Tragedy. Pet Go to Nine One One. Yeah, I got I got four different books out there. But... Uh, uh, Engineering Infinity. No, uh, no, that one came up for some reason. But then, yeah, American Tragedy, Pet Go to Nine Eleven, Red Justice, Second Coming to Um Oh, it's someone else named Schroeder. Uh, no, I, I have no idea why I put that up there. But anyway. Yeah, you've got two books on on Amazon, right? American Tragedy, Pet Goat of Nine One One, and Red Justice. Is there another one? Yeah, there's another one, but I forget exactly what the title of it is. <laughs> Eco behavioral <laughs> oh, such, analysis. Such a, no, no, no. It, they're all <laughs> they're all part of the same thing. It's just uh, it's been such a long time ago. I put them on there and then just uh, uh, took them oh. off and put put one on there for free today and. It said it, the promotion went on through, so I thought they had taken them off. Well, uh, it's, okay, I don't understand. It. I don't get it. It's borrow for free from your Kindle device. Yeah, if you got a Kindle book, they have a program where you can just download any any books that the the author says that he wants to have for free put on there. Okay, so I guess that's what it is. I don't have the I don't have the Kindle. I don't have the Kindle. But if you have the Kindle, you can get it for free. Or if you want to read it on the computer, which is what I did, I was like, yeah, I clicked the button that says buy now with one click, but I don't think I was charged anything, and if I was, I didn't care. But no, I don't think that I was charged anything, because I didn't go well, through it, any it shouldn't charge of- anything, because the last I did, I, I had all, all four books just on free, because I didn't want to mess with, you know, trying to find a way of, you know, using a bank, because banks and me don't get along. <laughs> mm. And, you know, so it's just one of those things to where, I just want to get the information out, right. and that's pretty much it. And yeah. and if, if you want, if you want, if you can't get the book or it doesn't download or you don't have anything, uh, I got the the CDs and the disc 
and PDF files. I could just send it to you so you can check them out. Okay. Well, yeah, guys, just uh, you know, put a comment on the show notes page if you want to learn more, or you know, you can hit Stephen up yourself. Uh, Stephen, how do you want people to get a hold of you? Well, there's my Facebook page. You can always hit that, and and if they want a friend request, I'll let them in, and they can see the postings there. There's the YouTube videos. I've got just about everything that I've ever talked about covered, including Prophet's Town and. You know, actually going there to Prophetstown and getting some footage of the Masonic evidence and the different things. I got just about every video that I've ever talked about on YouTube, so you can check that out. Comment there or through you. I'm easy to be reached. Yeah, if you want to find him, you, you'll find him. All right, Steve. Pretty much. Hey, thanks a lot, man. This is another mind-expanding edition of the <laughs> best conspiracy. <laughs> That's what we're here for. You yeah. have a good one. Everybody take care. And may y'all bless you, buddy. Hey, y'all bless you too, Stephen. I'm really glad to have you on the show, man. I'm looking forward to next week. All righty, buddy. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.